Greetings everyone, I am Jeb Howendale, and today I'm going to be reacting to The Brony Bakery, Episode 1, OC Design, by Finn the Pony. Now, uh, before you ask, yes, I asked Finn for permission to react to some of his videos, and this was one of them. And, uh, if you know who Finn is, he's a really awesome dude, like, one of the nicest guys in the fandom, the... Um, like, I can't think of anyone who's nicer than Finn. Like, Finn is really awesome. He is an awesome dude, and I really recommend go going and checking out out his uh, channel. The link there'll be a link in the description to his channel and to the original video. Oh, that's on his channel as well. Oh, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, and I don't know what to expect from this, but according to the title, I'm guessing this is going to be him discussing about OC designs. I'm not entirely sure, but, uh, yeah, this will be pretty fun to watch. Yep. I really enjoy a lot of Finn's videos, and I'm pretty sure I'll enjoy this one as well. So, yeah, with, with that being said, let's begin. That's a bit loud. Oops. Hate when that happens. Good day, everybody! My name is Finn the Pony, and welcome to the Brony Bakery, where we specialize in serving up the freshest of tips on how to improve your image in the Brony community. Love the art in the background, and... Or at the very least, we try to. It's not super easy balancing a pie shop with an advice center, but hey, if it means I get to help a lot more people, then I'm sure I'll be able to manage. For our first few episodes, we're going to focus on the first thing that one needs to master when it comes to pony content creation. The art of the OC. Oh, that's a what cute OC. What tricks and techniques for crafting your own original MLP character? What should you try to include and try to avoid? Well, let's get cooking. The first thing to note about an OC is that it's an original character. Emphasis on original. Creating an OC gives you the opportunity to flex those imaginative muscles in your brain and let your creativity flow. In a universe as expansive as MLPs, where creatures of all shapes and sizes can be found, there's certainly no shortage of possibilities when it comes to making your own character. An effective OC often consists of four major ingredients. A good design, a memorable name, a charming personality, and an engaging backstory. We're just going to focus on design for this episode, as it's the first thing that most onlookers will notice, and is often the thing that sticks out in people's minds. Of course this guy wouldn't know anything about that, being a Rule 85 Finn the Human and all. Just wait until we get to backstory, my friend. What you find out might just blow your mind. Well, Ooh. considering how long this episode took to come out, I'm not holding my breath. So, you're thinking of creating your own MLPOC. Maybe you want to give your online persona a face, or maybe you just want to create a unique character for a story or comic series you're developing. Either way, the best uh, place to I can't start make is comics. your species. I can't even what draw. kind of creature is this character going to be? Well, oftentimes, you'll see MLPOCs as one of the three members of the tried and true trio. That being wow, either love Earth Ponies, OCs. Pegasi, or Unicorns. I personally see nothing wrong with picking one of these three. Heck, I'm an Earth Pony and proud of it. But if you want to try something <laughs> new, and maybe take a few steps outside of the box, there are plenty of other creatures you can try out. We've seen the likes of alicorns, griffins, hippogriffs, sea ponies, wolves, changelings, crystal ponies, turtles, robotic horse mechs controlled by organic pony brains. Yep, we've got one of those too. Heck, why not just go all the way and create your very own species? Like my friend Erica, for example, who chose a majestic winged wolf to represent her. Oh, we'll nice! Story explaining exactly what this species' lifestyle is like. Or what about Cat Avenger, who combined the likes of a Pegasus and a cat to create the adorable and huggable Pega Cat? If it was a stuffed animal, I would buy it. Basically, okay, that what I'm cool. at here is that you should never feel restricted by what's commonly seen among other bronies. This is a community that embraces diversity, and if you feel like being portrayed as a creature that's not an equestrian encyclopedia, go right ahead. Heck, you'll probably be remembered more fondly for it. Once you've got your base down, <laughs> it's time for aesthetics. This, in my opinion, is the most important step, because even if you decide to choose a simple or well-known base, you can still make it shine with some interesting decorations. You have the chance to apply a unique color scheme, main style, tail design, and or extra accessories to really personalize your OC's look. One of my favorite things that I see creators do is base certain character aspects off of their real-life personas. 
KP, for example, has an OC with blue fur and brown mane with blonde highlights. This is because her favorite color is blue, and she wanted to make her mane style match her real-life hairstyle. It's cute, it's memorable, and it relates to the person mm -hmm. that made it. Or maybe you can make your OC's design reflect your personality. Lightning Bliss, for example, has that unique-looking paintbrush tail, likely symbolizing her love of art and her general creativity. And trust me, she's got a lot of it. But even if you don't want to base your OC off of yourself, I still feel it's key to add something that others will remember hey, you. Hey look, a golden Jupiter, key! For example, has a red and black coloration that's very often used and sometimes even frowned upon in the Brony community. But he tricked out his OC with accessories like a scarf and a signature red top hat to really give it a look all his own. And don't even get me started on his alter ego. That guy is full of style. Similarly, there's Rose Pal. A very simple Rainbow Dash recolor type OC with similar tail and mane designs, but throw on a unique creamsicle color scheme of white and orange, a pink jacket, and a cute little pair of nose glasses, and you've got an OC with their own unique sense of style. Come on, tell me mm -hmm. you don't want to hug her. Creative aesthetics are usually the most common feature used to draw a crowd. Anything from inviting color palettes to style awesome. outfits to unique proportions can really make onlookers take an interest in your character. I like some of her videos. Look at me! Here I am! Love me. The only thing I'm going <laughs> against in this case is going too overboard. You can definitely let your creativity fly when it comes to aesthetics, but try to limit things like your accessories or your use of color to a modest number. Try to aim for something like this with a decent amount of standout features, as opposed to this, which is just... Yeah, looks like if Rarity put her entire boutique's inventory on one mannequin. It could be hard to hit that perfect balance of unique and reserved, but after a lot of experimenting, you'll know a good look when you see it. And of course, what OC will be complete without their own special bud mark? Well, unless your OC is non-pony, of course, in which case you don't need one. Heck, even if you are a pony, you don't necessarily need one if you have a good reason for it. Yeah. What bad transition. The point is, if you do want your OC to have a cutie mark, it's important to understand exactly what a cutie mark is. In all honesty, this shows me the concept of cutie marks as confusing as it can get. But for the most part, cutie marks are used to show a pony's most valuable trait or talent. Sometimes it can be shown in a literal sense, such as a scroll representing a talent for writing, or a controller representing a talent for video games, but there are also those Indeed. marks that take a more symbolic approach. Let's say, for example, Mine's that a OC's lightsaber. cutie mark is a present with a big heart. For obvious reasons. So, does he give away hearts to people? Is he some kind of organ donor? Not necessarily. If you look at it from a different angle, one can assume that this is a pony that specializes in giving the gift of love to others. Maybe his special talent is devoting his time to making others happy, and he strives to give all he can to those that need it. It doesn't exactly spell that kind of thing out for you, but it can still convey that message pretty effectively if others think hard enough about it. There's a lot you can communicate to others with a simple butt tattoo, and as long as it encapsulates what your OC is all about, there are endless angles you can approach it from. The last thing I want to talk about is something that's not exactly necessary, but can still be effective. If you happen to be an artist with your own unique art style, you should feel welcome to incorporate said art style into your OC's presentation. There's nothing cool. wrong with making show Takara. accurate designs and vectors. Heck, I'm even fine with using the Pony OC creator in some instances. But showing off oh, one's nice. style can make an OC all the more memorable. I've used Take it a few for times. For example, Mad Munchkin, one of my personal favorite Brony artists. Maddie already has a lot of points in her favor. Her OC is a Shetland Pony, which is a unique twist on the normal Pony OC. She knows how to accessorize with that adorable hat and scarf, and she's got an interesting cutie mark to boot. But mm -hmm. the best part is that she chose to draw her OC in a fashion that's unique to her. This OC style is very reminiscent of the stuff that Maddie usually draws, so that helps to make it both more original and more personal. This mm -hmm. tip may not be for everyone, in fact my drawing abilities are akin to a child scribbling on a piece of paper, but it can be useful to all of those that are used to drawing in your own way. So better than anything I draw. So, with all these concepts in mind, let's take a look at some OCs that I think really encapsulate the idea of a creative design. Oh, cool. Let's see who's stepping down the runway tonight! Dr. Wolf, nice. Dr. Wolf decided to go a little bit off the grid here by making his OC an anthropomorphic arctic wolf. Seeing as the only oh, wolves in Equestria nice. we've seen so far are made out of wood, that's certainly a unique choice. Indeed. He's got a simple but effective getup here, with his formal shirt, pants, and ascot, along with the huggably cute size. He's pretty much got a little bit of everything good packed into this one. Not to mention that he does give off a very sweet and approachable vibe, fitting since psychiatrist is his profession of choice. If 
Firebrand. Appropriately enough, Firebrand's got a fiery red and yellow color scheme to coincide with his name, and I feel that the colors complement one another really well. He keeps the accessories yeah. minimal with just a black jacket and the occasional green undershirt, and he's got undeniably one of the coolest cutie marks ever created. Setting the classic Indeed. comedy mask ablaze can symbolize so many things. His fiery passion for creation, his ability to balance out silliness with seriousness, his secret wish of wanting to watch the world burn. You've been watching too much Batman, dude. <laughs> Hey, there's nothing wrong with watching too much Tindaga Batman, okay? <laughs> some territory by borrowing a species seen only hey, in the Tindaga. comics and not the show. Very creative. In addition, he drew his OC in his own unique style, and even included that little green crystal necklace, which goes perfectly with this tandem white color scheme in my opinion. Yeah. Only Ty started a trend here because I'd be really interested in seeing more reindeer OCs in the future. They'd certainly be a hit around Christmas time. I think I've always seen... Nose reindeer. <laughs> Is it <laughs> Can't go wrong with the Hippogriff King of Comedy deciding to go with a species that's still not canon in the MLP universe. Silver decides to combine a pony and a griffin, symbolizing his willingness to be part of the community, but also his love of doing things that one wouldn't expect. Throw on the fact that it's completely self-drawn, and it's obvious why this is one of the most recognizable faces in the Brony community. Too bad Silver is also the pain magnet of the Brony community. I can't go two seconds without something falling on him. Oh well, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And unfortunately, adds to your hospital bills. <laughs> yeah. And of course, there's the aforementioned Mad Munchkin, Lightning Boys, Tomb Critic, etc. All unique for the reasons I already mentioned. Oh, and also Looney Turtle, because. Turtle. <laughs> well, I certainly hope that was helpful to all you eligible content that. creators out there. Be sure to stay tuned for the next three parts where we dive into your OC's name, backstory, and personality. Feel free to comment if you have any thoughts or questions on today's topic. And until next time, I'm Finn the Pony, and happy baking! Oh, come on! How does a stove explode twice? I don't know. Maybe you should ask Michael Bay that. <laughs> I... Yeah. This, this it? Okay. Yeah, that was awesome. That was really awesome. Uh, I I love watching uh, Finn's videos. They're always entertaining and really well thought out too. And yeah, I I love this. I loved his talk about OCs and all that. Like for me, I have I kind of had a hard time with thinking of a different one, but I went like a pony version of my Star Wars OC. Which, yes, is named after me. Because I have no creative ideas on what to really name a Star Wars character. Real well. Yeah. But, yeah. And, uh... The only thing unique about my Star Wars character, I guess, is because... Yes, he's a unicorn and, and everything. Like, And the only other unique thing about him would probably be... You think it'd just be like his uh, fedora or his uh, sunglasses, but he also has another unique feature to him. Uh, basically, his horn it becomes the lightsaber. Basically, you like it, like he uses magic and his horn will when his horn glows, it can turn into a lightsaber, or just like that. And that's why I added to him to try and make him a bit more unique. You know, try and give him a bit of a different thing from normal Star Wars o Pony OCs that you see around the fandom. I just wanted to try and make him a little bit more unique and different. And I uh, thought maybe making his horn the lightsaber would probably add into that. But yeah, I'm getting off topic. Anyway, uh, well, sort of, but yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, more Bernie Bakery episodes talking about OC designs and other features. I really hope that Finn continues on with this because this is really a, an interesting topic to learn more about. Uh, so yeah, thank you all for watching. Be sure to go give Finn the Pony a, a like and subscribe. Make sure you follow him on uh, Twitch as well. He does a lot of awesome Twitch streams as well. well. And also be sure to give him a hug because 
hey, he's Finn. He, he deserves it. He's an awesome dude. And yeah, you can find the links in the description. And uh, yeah, I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Boop.